to run it as is and the wire out is going to eventually get gone as you can see you know once again just got a pass lead outside and get over the top of that cornerback as you can see there's definitely a throwing lane since that corner route pulls the um the, the cornerback sneed all the way to the sideline but you can see how he you know this guy here has to worry about multiple routes for the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no-band guarantee delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another full free breakdown for you guys today. I'm going to give you guys a about an hour's worth of my Niners offensive ebook. I used to put out a full breakdown or a full ebook out every single month, but I had some people complain that, you know, they're paying for these books and then I'm giving away for free. So now I only give about a third or a half, up to an hour. Like this video is going to be about an hour, and it's about, I'd say, five or six of my favorite offensive formations out of the Niners, which is an ebook that I recently put out but there's still a lot left in there so part of the reason that i do these other than giving away for free to some people that don't necessarily have the money to buy my ebooks is also to show people what you get if you purchase my ebooks what these videos are are a lot of times the video links uh, condensed into one long video when the ebooks are typically you know written descriptions and you also um, get clickable links which is what you're going to be watching throughout the rest of this video so if you guys want to see more from the Niners or you want to see more from any of the ebooks that I put out all you have to do is click the links in the description or the top pin comment and you can download them instantly other than that let me know in the comments section what team playbook offense or defense you'd like to see next month and if you want me to continue to do these videos make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button and let me know in the comments section other than that thanks for watching and let's get right into the video next up we have the zone week it's another good run play although it's not gonna be good if they're blitzing both safeties like they are here but i regret to run it anyway this is going to be something that's going to be best against like cover two uh man or zone based off the fact that um you know you don't typically have uh, the safety is reacting very well. Um, right here, though, I can I can you know run it. I can flip it and run it to the short side. You can see it's just a good inside run. It's one of the better inside runs in the formation, but there's nothing really special about it. As I'm gonna you know I'm not I'm not gonna have a ton of success running it against uh, you know packed boxes like I'm getting. But ultimately, it's a, it's a good run right here. We have some uh, you know I'll flip with the right stick, run it behind this you know to the gap. It's just a good five yard per carry type of play. Next up, we got the PA Pylon Sale. Then we'll start off with cover two. Very unique play because of the route concepts we have here. If I want to attack cover two, I can just put the A route on a streak. And the B route here is going to eventually get open outside because you can see how he has to react to the... Um, to the tight end you can also motion this guy across and put the x route on a fade and then i'll just block my running backs but you can see how the a route's in perfect position to act as a 10 yard out route and split those uh safeties as we get a kind of an underthrown ball here but it's still a very easy one play touchdown against cover two you can probably get away with throwing to the x route on that fade so let's go and let's do that one more time with the speed of of uh quez is probably the reason but you can see how he you know this guy here has to worry about multiple routes so you can really get either one open against cover two next up we'll pick that same play and we'll go with cover two man which against cover two man we're just going to motion this guy across and we're going to do pretty much the same thing where i put the x route on a fade and that's all i really got to do i'll block my running backs one more time because i don't really need them um you know there's just not a lot of uh not a lot that they're doing there. And you can see how we can continue as long as we have a really fast receiver like this. We can continue to throw a back shoulder as the um, the fade continues to get open outside that safety. You can also motion this guy across and do the same thing. We'll go ahead and we'll try to get the B route this time. Who still has inside release. That's why this play is going to work. Because he is starting to play inside the cornerback. And you can see how he's just getting across the field quickly because of it. Although there, he just dropped the ball. But I'll do that again. The only thing that can really mess this up is if these guys kind of run into each other too much. So if I want to streak the X route instead, that is an option that will help to get that B route across. Because I don't want them running into each other. And you can see now, they, they doesn't get in the way as much. And it's just a much easier release. Next up, we'll continue with man coverages. We'll go ahead and we'll do cover one hole. 
The best way to run this play is to run it from hash mark to the short side of the field, motion this guy across. I'll put him on a smart route to shorten that route. Then I'll put the X route on a fade or a streak. It really doesn't matter. Streak, once again, might not get in the way as much. And this is pretty much going to be the play. you got to run it to the short side of the field because you want this guy to, to cross the field quicker. And then you can see I get some pressure there. But uh, you can see how the receiver gets open. Then I'll do that one more time. Like I said, shorting him is a good move. I think fading the X route is probably a good move too. Probably a better move. Blocking the running backs would probably be a better move also. But you can see how the fade works better as we get the receiver wide open across the uh, safety once he crosses the safety. And the fact that I'm at the hash mark is why the safety doesn't follow as well. Pick that play again. We'll go ahead and continue. We'll do cover zero now. It's another play where I'm going to motion this guy across and put the X route on a fade. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna put the running back on a check and release though because I want to make sure that I have additional blocking to help pick up any, any initial rushers. And you can see how this guy here can get open over the top, but that's mostly because of speed. I wouldn't necessarily say that would work with everybody. But the real play anyway is going to be the B route, which I'm going to put on a, a smart route to make it a little bit shorter. You don't really even have to streak the X route. You can just put him on like a slant, some sort of check down that will bite to, or that will get the user to bite. And now you can see how this uh, this post route here, or this that's going to get open just naturally because that's typically what happens when it comes to cover zero. Post routes just typically beat that. You don't even really have to motion him across though. You can leave him where he's at. And this B route here will a lot of times get open above the cornerback Although there, that was a short throw, and he still makes the play one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to try that one more time. Like I said, he's got an inside release. You can see right there, it actually, uh, you saw because of the routes are so close together, that a lot of times the guy covering the tight end will bump him off as he got him wide open there. We're going to block the, the fullback because I don't really think it's going to have an effect on the play anyway. And then you can see, once again, we get another look where, where the, the cover just runs into one another. It makes it very easy. Next up, we'll choose cover three. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to run this from a hash mark to the short side of the field. Motion this guy across. Put the A route on a smart route and put the X route on a fade. That's all I really got to do. I'll go ahead and block uh, everybody in the backfield just because I do have to buy a little bit of time. And then I just got to wait for the B route to cross the field. And you can see how we get a very easy one play touchdown because the A route, the tight end, holds the cornerback down. Next up, we got cover four match. Against cover four, it's pretty much the same setup. You just have to motion this guy across with the X route and a fade, but you got to put the RB route on a 10 yard curl. And that's going to be the thing that keeps this guy from getting uh, double covered by the middle linebacker. And then he's just going to get wide open over the middle because the cornerback's responsibility is to, to cover that, but he's already starting too far outside. We're going to go with cover four regular. So we're going to have to go to the dollar. Except we got the PA deep read. This is a man concept. This play here, it's really all about the um, the uh, the comeback routes. They'll they'll just basically stop right in front of the cornerback every single time at about a 20 yard depth, 15 to 20 yard depth. If they play underneath though, you can just put one of them on a fade and throw the other one because if they play underneath, it will stop this route, but then the streak will get gone. So it's really the best of both worlds if somebody starts to get smart and starts to play underneath against a route like this. Then you just beat them over the top. Next up, we have the. PAX deep out. You got a couple of good plays to both running backs. I find it's best to put the B route here on an out route also. Although I always forget that AJ Brown's not easy like that. But you have some really good uh, zone concepts with the running back here, this flat route, which is a high low with the with the out route on the top receiver. And the running back on the or the fullback rather is running a speed out route which is a very good man beating concept. So let's see if we actually get a man. As you can see right there, we get a man concept or a man coverage and it beats that. So really one running back is good against zone where the fullback is good against uh, man coverage. Next up, we got the halfback zone toss. Next up, we got the halfback zone toss. This is gonna be best against slower defenses like four threes. So right here, the speed of this pitch is really what makes this play successful. If your opponent's running a lot of 4-3 or tightly packed defenses, you can hit them with a pitch run like this or a toss run like this, then you're gonna have a lot more success. But this really only works when they're when they're covering more inside the box. And you can see right here, they still kind of stretch me out. It's not like a guaranteed play, but it's a good run play. And like I said, it only really works based off of your opponent's alignment. If they're pinched really tight, you'll get to the outside very easily. Next up, we got the halfback stretch. This play here, you can run it multiple ways. You can run it to the strong side, which is, you know, adequate. I don't find this is the best way to run it, but you can see you can still have success with that. I like to flip it and run it behind the two receivers. Make that same motion that I've been making 
and then flip the play and run it behind them. So this here to be to me is going to be the best. As you'll see that um, you know those fake, he'll run fake routes a lot of times. If his man coverage will pull the defenders back. I only got about five yards on that carry, but I do find that I mean you also want to run to the open side of the field, which is not necessarily what I'm doing here. But you can see how it creates space between the guard and the and the uh, or the defensive tackle and the defensive end, uh, which I could also take advantage of. But you can see how you know it really just creates a wall of blockers that makes it very easy to get outside for big runs. So to me, this is probably the better way to go. As you can see, once again, this guy pulls that defender out. If I want to cut it short and cut it back inside, I got a huge you know, run lane there, but I still find that the bigger plays are outside. Next up, we have the I-Form Hapak ISO. Just a good inside run. If your opponent isn't respecting that lane, you can just take that. There's really not much more to it, though. It's a very simple inside run uh, with not a lot of adjustments need to be made. You can always flip it, though. I mean, if you see something on the other side, like on this right side here, we've got a pretty big gap. Uh, and we can just run that all game. Next up, we got the halfback counter weak. It's another play really works best if there's a gap between the uh, the tackle and the defensive end. That's really going to be when you're going to have the most luck here. I still find the motion this guy cross makes a lot of sense as it always pulls the linebacker out, um, which is going to be helpful because they won't be able to aggressively attack the run play as quickly. And you can see we get a better carry that time. Uh, but that's pretty much all there is to it. As you can see, we can we can create that space. Although here we don't get that space because it was a man coverage. We pulled the defender across. But I'm going to run it this way anyway, even though this is not necessarily the best idea. And it still have a lot of success because those two receivers running fake routes will always be big against man coverage. And last but not least, we've got the PA double dig. I'm going to pick that. This play is specifically for man cover four. So let's go and let's pick cover four, drop contain. So this play here, you can either just motion this guy out and put him on a comeback and then put your running back and your fullback on streaks. I'm going to block my uh, my tight end so I can double team the edge here uh, because the biggest issue here is it's going to take a little bit of time for this route to get across but once he does you can see that it's a uh, you know you can dot up that corner for an easy one play touchdown although it said I was out of bounds next up we have the PA boot flow now they're probably going to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field because when we motion out this running back here we're going to give him a little bit of a head start He's going to get open underneath zone coverages, but against man coverages like that was. The second I see somebody react and come down to that fullback, I'm just going to flip it out to either the tight end, or I also have the option to throw it to the X route. The B route's not a bad option on this play either, unlike other plays. But you can see right here, he's open in the flat. I don't know if that was a man coverage or not, but the idea of me motioning him out pre-snap gives him a little bit of a head start. You, this is another play where if you want to block the running back, you can do like a flip and get it out quick, although there it didn't really work out. That looked like a man coverage, but it still got open. I'm not sure, really sure what that play was. Next up, we have the halfback stretch. This play here, I find it's best just to run it as is. Um, I mean, blocking at the moment is really uh, the way to go, and running the ball to the edge is really the way to go. You can flip the play, though, and have success with it because you can see, I mean, the, the defense is usually stacked over to the two tight end side. So this is a really good run play to either direction. Just see, you know, like right here, everybody seems to be on the right side. If I want to flip it and go the other way, I think that's a pretty good tactic. And even though I have a running back and fullback, you can see we're still getting enough of a chip block for me to get outside. So it's really up to you. You can run this either way, but it's a very good play. Next up, we have the halfback lead. Just a good inside run. A lot of the run plays in this formation are designed to go outside. So if your opponent starts spreading the defense, just hit him with an inside run like this. Very simple. You can flip the play. If you think that there's more space on one side than the other, you can flip it with the right stick and go in the opposite direction. Uh, but it's just an inside run. You can see, you know, a lot of these defenses are, are, are giving up a lot, um, you know, a lot of space to the inside because they might be more concerned with stopping outside runs, making the middle wide open. Next up, we have the PA Sprint Halfback Flat. Start off with cover two. Against cover two, I'm just gonna motion this guy across and put the A route on a streak. And that's gonna, he's gonna stop right next to the tight end, which is perfect because this guy's gonna be, um, he's gonna get open right above the cover two cornerback. And if he gets a good catch and run, it can be a potential one play touchdown, but at the end of the day, it's just a big play against cover two. Next up, out of the I form slot close, we have the PA spot. First, we'll start off with random. So for this play here, I'm going to put the X route in a streak, and that's all I really have to do. The rest is pretty much uh, up to you. If I want to try to throw it to this tight end, who I probably should have replaced with a running back, I can motion him into the uh, the flat here, 
And if it's a zone coverage, he's going to get on pretty quick. But if it's a man coverage, he's going to get covered. So since that was a man coverage, the next option is going to be to put the A route on a drag, which will give you a man beater. Although you also have the option to put him on a 10-yard in route, which will also beat man coverage. And it won't really get in the way. Like if I have him on a drag, he'll kind of get into the same area as the RB route, which isn't the worst thing because if it's like a zone coverage, he could turn to a blocker. And you see that it even made the defender hesitate. But it's really up to you. I find that... If you read the defense, then it's a little bit easier to uh, set this up with uh, with the 10-yard in route so you can have a little bit of separation there. I find this is probably the best way to run it. But like I said, it doesn't really work against uh, against um, man coverage as well. As you can see there, it looks like we have like a cover two, so he gets to open up the, the cover two uh, between the safety and the cornerback. But I would say if you don't know what the defense is, it would be best to run it like this where you have your dragging check down, your B route would be the main route. This would be probably the best way right here. It looks like we have a zone coverage, and I don't know what's going on with Jalen Hurts' accuracy, but he was definitely uh, open there as well. This particular route is really all about, from playing this play, it's really all about that, that corner route, and then the A route's really just a check down. This is probably the best way to do it. Although, <coughs> in Madden 24, it really doesn't seem to give me uh, the best... Uh, accuracy when it comes to I don't know maybe you have to have like a, a superstar quarterback or something but you don't seem to get the best accuracy when you try to uh, to throw um, underneath like cover three zones and stuff like that I don't know uh, that's something that um, seems to be programmed in the end of the game this year so let's go and let's do that one more time it's definitely man coverage like I said one second I see that I know I'm going to the a route that's really the only route that I have that's an option if it's a zone coverage I'm pretty much going to be trying to hit the, uh, the X route every single time. So we're going to do that one more time. Like I said, it's really just a man or a zone read. Right here, got a zone coverage. Uh, at least I think it's a zone coverage. I'm not really sure. It might have been a couple of quarters. Uh, but you can see it's still got open, whatever that was. It, it, the, the B route can get open against man. It's just not as reliable as the drag, obviously. So here we go one more time. Like I said, I'm not sure what that is. It looks like a cover three, some sort of zone. And we squeeze it in. This play also has success against cover three. So we're going to pick cover three sky. So, against cover three, you're running from a hash mark to the open side of the field. I'm going to put the RB route here on a wheel route, and then when I just, just any route to get him out. And then when I get him out there, I'm going to put everybody on streaks except for the B route because this play is really going to be about the X route. Once the uh, the cornerback here reacts to the um, reacts to the corner route, once he once the uh, corner route pulls the cornerback out, it will give you the space to basically thread this needle here. As you can see, I mean, it's really, it's not as, you know, it's not as dramatic a reaction. These cover three cornerbacks in Madden 24 do a much better job of uh, covering. But you can see I have 10 yards of separation. So if I bullet and pass lead that up and away through the middle there, especially if I have a fast receiver. I mean, Devontae Smith is only like 91. But you can see how you can split that for a cover three one-point touchdown. Also, a big play against cover two specifically, which I guess I'll go over, where all you got to do is streak the, the B route here once again, or the X route once again, and the B route here. Uh, as long as you bullet and pass it up, can be a, a, a possible one play touchdown. But, uh, you know, cornerbacks are much better playing deep in this year's game. Except we have the halfback stretch. Another good run play going against random defenses. One of the things, if it's uh, man coverage, I'd say flip it because the cornerbacks will drop back as if they're, you know, as if these re these receivers, if the receivers run fake routes, they'll pull the cornerbacks back in man coverage. I find it's best to flip it against the against zone coverages too, if I'm being honest, um, as I think this is probably going to be the best way to run this play is behind the blocking receivers. Next up out of the slot close, we have the halfback blast. It's just a good inside run. I find it's best against man coverage to run as is. You can see, I mean, we just get some really big holes. This year might be more of a running year than a passing year as a lot of these run plays are just really blowing up, you know, really big holes. But if it's a man coverage and there's no cornerback on the right side, it might be best to flip with the right stick. But ultimately, I find it's best just to run it as a design. As you can see, we're getting some really big holes right in that area. Next up, we have the 94 Will. It's just a good inside run play. Um, you know, this entire formation has got some, you know, it's mostly a, a good running formation at the end of the day, whether it's inside or outside. Next up, we got the halfback zone week. Another good inside run, just a counter off of the outside run. So if your opponent is worried about the outside runs or spraying their defense, hit them with an inside run. It's really that simple. 
Next up, we got the Spider Mesh. So for this play here, the double drags will get open against just about any defense man or zone. You can see that they're just, you know, all over the place. No, they don't know where they're going. They don't know, you know, eventually these drags will get open. But you also have the option if you're going to run this from a hash mark to the short side of the field to put the B route on a on a streak and that'll give you a pullback route or a clear out route that will help with the uh, tight end and the running back as we get a cover two right there and we actually score one play touchdown so you can see how good of a play that can be against cover two zone but both him and the um and the the running back or the sorry the rb route will get open against zone coverages while the drag really only beats man if you're going to do it this way though you might want to put the, the drag on like a zig or something just so that he can um you know go the other way because you don't want all your receivers flooding on one side of the field it can be problematic so like i said if it's man go with the double drags if it's zone just streak the b route and then you have multiple receivers on the right side that can get open against any zone coverage next up we got the power o one of my favorite run plays let's go let's pick that pick random for the power o i just like to flip it and run it to the to the short side you can motion this guy across if it's a man coverage and somebody follows us not the best thing but if it is i mean it still will help because they run fake routes that pull people back you really want to run this like a count or like a trap run as you can see i want to run it right at that gap there i don't want to take this outside whenever i want to run this is like you see right there you got a huge gap huge spacing between the um between the the tackle and the defensive end that's what's going to make this play successful is now i got a huge lane making that motion across i got a huge lane right up the center they're going to kick that guy out who's too wide and we're going to get a big run right up the middle every single time this is one of the easiest run plays in the game so i'll go and I'll do that one more time i don't have to like right here there's nobody in that area other than the 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 defensive end is out too far i know he's going to get kicked outside so i can just run it as is and look how these guys get it to the third level i mean they're all the way to the safeties as this is just such an easy run play anytime you see that giant gap if you see that giant gap that giant spacing it's going to be a big play i'll go i'll go ahead and i'll take this guy again like you see we pull somebody over that makes that unnecessary if it's a man coverage and you're pulling somebody over don't worry about it just run it as is if you have this big gap here like that don't make no motion just go ahead and run it and then look at this you just got you know that first guy missed the block that uh, the fullback missed the block but otherwise it would have been set up perfectly like here now we have a guy an extra guy sitting in that gap we don't have a blocker for him so let's motion this guy across looks like a man coverage now this uh you know this guy will pull everybody back and it just puts me back in a place where there's just nothing out here and i get an easy 10 yards the second i make that motion so you got to know when to make that motion but other than that it's a very successful play here's another one we got an extra defender over there i'll go ahead and i'll make my motion you can see we didn't bring anybody across but now that defender is going to pay attention to b or the b receiver is going to block him which is just as good and then you can see we can get up the field again i mean we're getting a very easy carry in space every single time Another play, no motion required. All the defenders are on the right side. So we're just gonna flip it and boom, we're getting all this, we're getting all this real estate. Just super easy run. And when you consider that the stretch run is gonna be the main focus on us on a formation like this, people aren't gonna be ready for that. Next up we have the PA tight end leak. We'll start off with cover two. So we'll play touchdown against cover two. If you just motion across the tight end, put him on a streak and put the B route on a 10 yard out route. I'm running it to the hash mark. I'm running it to the wrong hash mark, but it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be an easy one play touchdown. As you can see, just splits the safeties. Uh, running from a hash mark to the other side of the field might be beneficial though. This play has multiple setups. I'll show it on the next play when it comes to cover two man. It's another play where you could motion the tight end or you can actually motion the B route. It really doesn't matter. The B route might work even better though as I can put the B route on a fade and he'll get in the way a lot better. So that's where I'm going to run it. A route I'm going to use for my 10 yard out route which is still important. And you can see how that um, really helps to get these guys bumping in each other's way and gets, they, gets uh, AJ Brown off of his release. Still had a little bit of an issue uh, when it comes to um, the pass pro. So I can go ahead, I could block the, 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 the fullback because that's not really 100% necessary. And you can see he's still getting open. The B route looks like he's getting open too because of the weird press animations that we're getting. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that one more time and see if I can get that route to work. Because the B route, if you watch the receivers, like they're getting like really crazy jammed off. And then it's to the point where the B route just gets open outside here because he's getting so far pushed outside. So that's another way to do it. Going to watch the replay. 
like I said, you're getting some really crazy uh, animation. No, he just runs around everything. You know what I mean? Because it's like, once again, you have that stack look. So you can see the cornerback is pressing the lead receiver, but he's supposed to be covering six. He's supposed to be covering Devontae Smith, and that's why he gets so far off. Getting a little too Johnny. Johnny on the spot. So one more time. I don't even have to worry about the A route because that's not even coming to play anymore. So that safety, once he turns, that's really what it is. Once he turns inward towards the post route, that's when you throw it. So it's definitely best to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field. And if you're going to try to throw to the post route, it's probably best to use the tight end to run across. For whatever reason, it just helps to get Brown open better. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> but the other way is probably still better in general. Because I know if I, you know... This is how I would want to do it. I mean, this is easier. So I just got to hold the ball a little bit longer. So I'll wait for that wait for that safety to turn outside, and then boom, we're getting a super easy one-play touchdown. So next up, we'll do cover three. So it runs from a hash mark to the short side of the field, motion guard across, put him on a delay fade, and then put the B route on a flat. I'm also going to put the fullback on a streak, and the play action is going to do a good job of holding everybody in place while this guy here just gets right over the top of the cover three and a bit of a tight window throw, but still a cover three won't play touchdown nonetheless. Next up, we'll do cover four quarters. Against cover four quarters, just motion across the tight end, put him on a streak. That's all you really got to do, and it's a one play touchdown to the X route. And for whatever reason, just gets kind of forgotten, although I got sacked there. Um, but we'll do that again. I don't know what happened there with the pass pro. One more time. Like I said, do this guy. I mean, I could, you know, block the... Uh, the fullback, it's not really changing the play. I mean, the way this guy's just running down the middle of the field, I could probably just put him on a streak. I don't probably even need him on that post route because he really just seems to get forgotten. As this is, you know, comfort cores is kind of glitchy right now. Uh, this will probably need some, some patches and some updates in that regard. But like I said, he's just he's just getting forgotten out here. So I wouldn't run comfort cores too much. Next up, we'll do... Actually, I don't think we did cover zero yet. So against cover zero, it's going to put this guy on a fade. And because they're so tight to one another, one of these routes is going to get open. I mean, the corner or the post route is going to get open pretty much every single time as is. Next up, we'll do cover one. Same thing. Could shorten the, uh, against any man coverage, you can shorten the route and it'll be helpful because it'll get across the field faster. As you can see here, we get another, um, you know, just smart route the route about 10 yards and you'll get a, get a quicker route that gets open against any man coverage, really. Except cover two. Cover two man. <coughs> and last but not least, we got regular cover four. Against cover four, run from a hash mark to the short side of the field and just block the tight end. That's all you really got to do. The X route will be an instant one-play touchdown once he gets uh, inside the safety. He's just got a bullet and pass lead up and over the strong safety. Next up, we got the cover four update for the PA tight end leak for October 4th. This is cover four match. All you have to do is put the fullback on a wheel and motion him out. That's all you got to do. And the X route will get open inside the cornerback one more time. As you can see, it's, you know, it's basically like a man coverage as he didn't catch it there. The pass was out of reach. We'll do it one more time. Said, just put the tight end on a wheel. You have to motion him out. The only reason I'm motioning him out is because if I don't, from this hash mark, he kind of goes the other way. Um, I think that could change if I if I were to do that to the other side of the field. I think he'll just, you know, you don't have to motion him out if, if you can get him in that wheel route in the right direction, like right here. So now he's in the right direction, so I don't really have to worry about that. Although you can see it did kind of change the, the coverage a little bit based on the hash mark. So maybe it's better to do it the first way um, just be and run from a hash mark to the open side of the field. We'll go and run this one more time As you can see there that I motioned him out. It actually did change the coverage right quite a bit So motioning him out is key as it forces that safety to react to him a little bit quicker So I guess the motion out is important So I mean, you know your opponent might think you're running with that motion But you can see once again very easy one play touchdown against cover fours He just he just has inside leverage on that cornerback and beats him across the field Next up, we have the PA Deep Read. It's another cover zero play. These deep routes here will run, um, you know, comeback routes that just pretty much get open against man zero. It's really that simple. It's like a 20 yard route too. Next up, we have the PA Boot Flow. I'm gonna pick that. 
For this play, I would typically motion out the fullback. I'll block my running back too because I don't want that. But I'll motion him out. Fullback's my my zone read. The A route is my man read. That's pretty much how I'm going to kind of operate this. And you can see we got a man coverage, so the A route gets open. If it's a zone coverage, it's going to be to the flat. Because this is really just a good catch and run play. Like I said, I'm blocking my, my running back because I don't want him messing up my, my throwing, my feet, anything like that. You can see you can just get some good catch and runs. Now, you can put a fast running back at this spot. You don't have to have a tight end. That's my fastest tight end. Uh, but a running back with a little more agility would be even better as I accidentally put the B route on something. But that's fine. He doesn't really do anything anyway. And like I said, we got that A route every single time. You know what I mean? It's like that's it's a simple read. You're taking the check down to the, to the fullback. Or you're taking the crosser to the tight end. Now you could also motion this guy across if you have what looks like a cover two here, or any zone coverage. Really, just motion this guy across. Although this is obviously a man coverage, and uh, the the X route here can get open against a number of things. That was actually pretty tight man cover two from the guess. Uh, if you want to run it from the hash mark, though, you'll get uh, you'll get better reactions against zone. So if this is a zone coverage, and I motion this guy across, put him on a streak. Although I'm not really sure because there's somebody following. But uh, if you do this, you'll get uh, that streak will pull back any zones in the area. Although that was a really weird coverage, I don't know what that was. As uh, kind of got confused there. But like I said, most zone coverages, this guy motioning across and putting him on a streak will draw back anything in the area, allowing the corner route to get open. So okay, once again, that was a cover two. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here though. I'm getting hit. The second I get the ball out, you did see though that the uh, that the route was open. That's the most important part. Go on, block my running back from now on because that's that's a bigger issue than it does help anything. And then you can see, I don't know what that was, but he got open again. So, you know, that route from the hash mark will get open. It's just about anything. Next up, we got the zone toss. I'm going bulk up here a little bit, go random. Runs from a hash mark to the open side of the field is going to be important, but since you're motioning the tight end a lot, the, uh, the strong side can change. Uh, but this is, you know, toss runs are, are back. In Madden 24, as you can see, I mean, that was just like, that was easy. That was just like stealing. Although I, I probably could have scored if I really cared. <laughs> I could have cut cross again. I could have cut back. Uh, but like I said, you can flip this play and you can motion. Since we're doing a lot of motions with the tight ends, you can really go in either direction here. You can do the same thing with the receiver. I mean, we're motioning the receiver around a lot, but uh, the blocking's great. I mean, strong plays are really as bad as good as it gets. Toss plays are as bad as good as it gets. I'll go and I'll motion across. Smith one time if you have a man coverage and it pulls the man defender across uh, You can just leave it as is this is a zone coverage and I mean I was sprinting way too quick my fullback didn't block anybody He let two guys pass um, But if I get a man coverage Again zone coverage you want to flip it and motion this guy across but if you get a man coverage You can flip it or you can leave it as is and motion the guy across I'll, I'll wait till I actually get a man coverage though before I get into all that but this is fine. I mean, this is a good run play just like this. I mean, it's not, um, I think it's probably best, as you can see, we're getting another big run here. I, I think it's probably best to, to do the, uh, the two receivers. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna motion it back across here and I'm gonna do two receivers and flip behind that. <clears throat> Man or zone. I think it's best to motion this receiver across. This is a zone, so we're definitely gonna get a good look here as we have just our two widest blockers out here. Although we also got our worst result so far. I'm trying to get a man coverage where I can motion across. That looks like a zone. So we'll motion this guy across. Like I said, it's definitely a zone. Does pull somebody across, but that's fine. This defensive end being out wider than the tackle is really the, the issue there. But there's multiple ways to run this. I mean, it's a very good run play. You can run it as is. You can flip it. You can motion the tight end. You can motion across the receivers. Um, I'm still waiting to see a man coverage. I'm going to have to choose one here. Like I said, if you get a guaranteed man coverage like this, and you motion this guy across, now there's no cornerback out here to hold down the outside edge. So this is a good scenario, especially if you're on the open side of the field, which I am not. But this is a good scenario to go to the side where there's no cornerback at all. And that'll be that way against, against cover one man or cover zero. Next up, we got the halfback stretch. Another play, just like, this, just like the toss, I can go either way. I find it really works out fine either way. It doesn't really matter. You can motion the tight end. You can motion the receivers. If you get a cover zero, it's going to be best. I don't think it's a cover zero necessarily. But if you can pull that man coverage defender across with them, like X, it was a cover zero. Now you got nobody to the outside here. You still want to run to the hash mark to the open side of the field. But that is a good opportunity to run outside where there would be no cornerback to contain you. Um, 
but you know, there's a lot of different options. Like I said, if I want to go wide side without flipping it, I can do that by motioning across the tight end and doing a lot of pass plays with motion. So it's not necessarily going to be like some giveaway uh, because I do a lot of motion receivers and tight ends in this formation. So definitely a good run play to either side. Next up, we got the halfback ISO. If your opponent's worried about the outside runs, you just switch over to the ISO and you got a good inside run. That's really all this is. Next up, we got the double outs. Against any coverage but cover two, which is what this looks like, this X route will get open. And you can see how the cover two zone just sits on that. So you can tell it's a cover two zone because the cornerback's five yards off the ball. They work on both sides. Here it looks like the same thing. I said that's a cover, that's a cover two man. Uh, so like I said, any cover two where the cornerback's five yards off, it's gonna get covered. So I'm glad I got those defenses out of the way. And it looks like we're in that cover two once again. So I don't know what's going on with the defense choosing only cover twos right now. But let's get some cover threes and cover fours. There we go. Now we got the cornerbacks five yards off. You can see we get, um, you know, we get a nice, easy connection for 10 yards. And it's going to work that way against cover three, cover four, and man coverage. So it just looks like a man coverage, as you can see. He just gets outside. So any man coverage, cover three, cover four, those routes are going to get open. Next up, out of the gun split twin stack, we have the smash wide dig. We'll go ahead and we'll choose. We'll start off. We're going to go to a big uh, nickel and we'll start off with Tampa 2. Against cover 2, just streak the X route. That's all you really got to do. And the B route here will get to be a very big play over the top of the cornerback as the cornerback has to react to that like circle route. It's not necessarily going to be a one-play touchdown, but it's definitely a big play. And that's good enough. I mean, if I get um, you know, a good enough throw or good enough catch and run, this can be gone as I have an opportunity here. If I had Quez Watkins running that, it would definitely gone. So we can call that a one-play touchdown against cover two. This play here has a natural uh, man-beating concept with the speed out route here, which should beat anything other than cover two. Cover two man in zone, we'll stop that. Next up, we got the slot cross. So you got two options here. You can put the X route on a drag and give yourself three levels of check downs with the RB route, the drag, and the B route crossing. And the A route only pulls back coverage. But if you do it like this, you can really hit any level here and they should all be open. Like that was a cover three and the deep crosser was open. Um, the fullback underneath or the running back underneath will only be zone though. So just be aware of that. You can see right here, that was a zone. They dropped back on. I can take that. I'm kind of reading it as that's my first read first and then going from front to back. You can also motion across this route here though if you have a man coverage, which is what this looks like. And since the defender's following, that means that it is. But this X route here is a very good man beating route. The, the, the other one is too. The B route is too. But you can see how this route here can uh, can get open against man coverage to the outside every single time. Doesn't matter what man coverage that is. It's a very good play. But uh, you have two options. You can either do this and just go over the middle front to back. Or if you know you have a man coverage, you could always uh, motion that guy across and have a very big play. You can probably do that with that route as well. Well, here looks like it might be a man coverage. So we'll go ahead and do that again. Although I motioned the wrong guy across. And so I'm going to wait and motion him back because I can't take the chance of uh, resetting the play because I probably won't get another man coverage. So like I said, we can do brown. Like I said, every time you're going to run this, so you're going to want to make sure you're running from a hash mark to the open to the wide side of the field. But he actually stops a lot closer to the line of scrimmage, giving that route much more time to develop. As you can see there, that was actually the, the routes kind of got in each other's way, which made it even easier. But they're both very good routes. Next up, we got the read option. For this play, once again, watching that read defender, if he's aggressive like he is there, got to keep with the quarterback. Probably want to have ball carry on conservative so I don't fumble. But uh, it's a very good play, and it's going in the opposite direction of some of the previous plays that I've shown. If he stays home like he did there, you got to hold A and hand it off. As you can see right there, he would have planted my quarterback a couple yards deep. But we get a decent run. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Like I said, watch that guy right there. He actually hesitated to the point where I wasn't sure what he was going to do. But you can see you can get an easy five to seven yards every single time, regardless of who gets the ball. Next up, we got the Power O. This is like a counter run. It's one of the few run plays that goes in the other direction, and it's a decent run. It's not a great run, but if your opponent is really shifting to the to the strong side, say you're having a lot of success on that side, it's not a bad idea to, to hit them with a counter run just to keep them honest and make sure they're not able to do that because you can see I'm still getting a decent carry, even though I'm not really going through reads and not really – you know, trying to pick my way and find the best defense. I'm still getting four to five yards every single time, despite whatever defense is being called. I'm not even really sure, but you get that pulling uh, guard come across, and it's very helpful to give you at least an option to go in the opposite direction. Next up, we got the PA spot. Go ahead and pick random. 
For this play, you're going to want to run from a hash mark to the short side of the field. And after that, all you really got to do is put the X route on a streak. And maybe put the A route on a drag or a 5-yard in. It really doesn't matter. But you have a high-low concept between the Y route and the uh, the B route. If you want to motion out the Y route, he'll get a little bit more of a head start on that play. And then you can see how you can get that open a little bit easier and quicker. Might be a small tell if you do it too much. But at the end of the day, it is a very effective motion. So we're going to do that again. Like I said, the drag is really just for man because not a lot of these routes uh, really have success against man. As we get a cover three, you can see how that, that streak pulls back the cornerback. That's going to work against any zone coverage other than cover four because that's more of like a matching uh, zone coverage. I'm going to block the running back too because I don't want that play action. That kind of messes everything up. And then you can see here once again, we get that look. We get five yards easy underneath every single time. And that's pretty much the reach. It's those two plays there. Unless it's a man coverage, then you want to take the check down. It also has the ability to be a one-play touchdown against cover three. All you got to do is streak the Y route, the A route, and the X route, and motion the Y route out. And if you run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field, it's going to be a very easy play. I'm going to go ahead and put the running back on a wheel, too, just to try to hold that safety over. You can try to streak him also. Just get that safety over as much as possible. And the X route here, once the cornerback bites on the corner route, can get open up the seam for an easy one-play touchdown against cover three. This play can also have a lot of success against cover zero, so let's pick that. Against cover zero, though, you're going to want to motion this guy over and get him out of the play entirely. So now we got a one-on-one -on -one with the safety. I'm going to give myself like a dragging check down or something. But that B route there is a very good man-beating route. As you can see, he just completely poops on that. And that, that cornerback wasn't anywhere near that play. So very easy play against cover zero. It can also be a big play against cover two. We're going to pick uh, cover two zone. If I can find that, wherever that is. Cover two. Cover two. There we go. Same setup, dragging the A route, putting the X route on a streak to pull back to pull the coverage back. And then if I can lead up the field, I might be able to get a one-play touchdown there. But at the very least, it's a very big play. This is a man-being route that also has success against cover two man. Just got to do the same thing, give, you, give myself that streak. And you can see how the B route's getting outside of that. Like I said, this is just a man-beating variety of a corner route. And it's, um, you know, it's going to beat just about any man coverage, really. Next up, we got the inside zone. It's a very good run play. It's an inside zone, but you have a blocking fullback, which most inside zone plays don't have. So that makes this a very, uh, a very good version. As you're going to see, this guy here, I mean, he just, Goddard just basically takes that guy head on. And I could either follow him or use that to peel outside. A lot of times going outside is going to be where all the real estate is. You get more explosive plays. Now, that was actually a blitz, maybe a man zero blitz. But you can see a very good run play from this formation because of the, um, the pulling blocker from the fullback as I could just follow him up the hole. And then, like I said, from there, uh, I mean, I'm going to get five yards before I even get contact at this point. Next up, we got the read option. It's another play we're just watching that read defender. If he hesitates, which he did not, like right there, he kind of chases. You want to keep with the quarterback. Although they did a very good job pursuing there. Ultimately, you're not typically going to have that problem. But like I said, watch the R defender, the defender with the R above his head, and make your choice based off of that. That was actually the wrong choice. Most people will have that guy uh, dropping back for the, uh, the QB contain anyway. But you can see how you have opportunities here, just as long as there's not a second defender there just waiting, uh, which has happened just about every single time. Let's go let's do this one more time. Like I said, we're going to get an opportunity at some point to get out wide here and make a big play. But uh, this particular defensive alignment is doing a pretty good job. But still a good play to have in your in your audibles. As you can see, you can go really either way. I mean, I could stretch it this way with the running back, or I could go the other way with the quarterback, making it very effective to multiple areas. Except by the gun split close, we have the Niners swirl. This is a man coverage play, so let's pick cover zero. It's really all about these outside routes. They just run good comeback routes. As you throw that short, they'll try to you know maintain over the top, and you'll always be able to come back to the ball. And that'll work on either side. The B route should have the same success, unless your opponent plays you know underneath coverage. At that point, you just put one on a streak and one on a comeback route, and one will always get open. So if your opponent is playing underneath, just streak one. If you see the cornerbacks play down or drop down shallow, you can basically just throw the streak over the top. So you really have the best of both worlds. Next up, we have the Niners halfback rail. Another man coverage play. This play here has all man beating routes. The Y route here is really going to be best against, um, you know, for the play. It's like a, it's an easy one play touchdown because at least you have a receiver running a wheel route, which typically you don't have. Uh, you really want to make that a cheat code. Put your fastest guy there. I put Quez Watkins there. But there's a lot of other routes 
that get open like this in route here. I can take that all game. If I shorten my routes on the other side, there wouldn't be a tackler there. So if I really wanted to, to make that play work, I could put like the B route here on a, a slant just to get him out of there. And then you can see how this guy could be, you know, that could be a very easy catch and run. Um, if I don't want the safety to be there, I could just check and release the tight end because that's why, um, you know, that's why the, uh, the the cornerback's there. And now you can see I, I have more opportunity, although the pressure will get in from time to time. But it's still a really good man zero play, and it's mostly because of the receiver or the running back on the wheel route. Next up, we have the halfback wheel. Start off with cover two. Go ahead and go to this one here, Tampa two. Against cover two zone, you got a couple options here. I could go streak the B route and attack quez the uh 18 out here as you can see that's going to pull back the safety it'll give you a big play not necessarily a one play touchdown but it's gonna be a big play but this is pretty much a natural one play touchdown to the x route if i just block my tight end for a little extra pass pro as you can see i mean that guard's getting bullied but you can see how this guy can split those safeties once again very similar to some of the other plays from this formation next up we'll do cover two man very similar as far as it doesn't really require a lot of setup the a route there is an option but if I want to do that, I probably got to streak the B route, which I didn't do. So, you know, I'm not really um, a fan of that route necessarily being the first read anyway. But you can see how he can get outside of that, especially with Quest Watkins running it, who's a lot faster. So streaking the B route, obviously, you can do that as well. But you can also throw the X route, or you can just wheel the running back, because he's already on a wheel. But that wheel route, really, it's kind of a long game. Like I said, I could throw it right away against it. But getting up the field takes a little bit longer. As you can see, it's still a very explosive play. I can probably get a one-play touchdown with that as well, um, with a little more catch and run time. But I find that you can just put him on a regular wheel, too, and it'll have a lot of success. But you can see how this guy here can split those safeties, too. It's a little bit hard against man coverage, cover two, but you have a couple different options as well. Next up, we're going to do uh, cover one hole. So pretty much the same as before. I'm just going to re-wheel the Y receiver. And you can see how the safety is nowhere near this side because he's cheating over to the two receiver side, making this a very easy one-play touchdown. That route can probably get it done without making the adjustment. Let's go and let's give that one more try because it is very effective. And I can throw it right away, which is going to be better. But you can see how it also gets open when turning up the field. So you don't really have to make any adjustments in this running back. It's pretty much a one-play touchdown against his defense. Go ahead. We'll pick that play again. We'll do cover zero. Cover zero, I mean, I could do running back one more time. But I got to check and release this fullback. That's going to be the most important part. The running back, as you can see, the running back just takes a really long time to get out there. So it's not necessarily the best option. So it's probably actually better to check and release both running backs. And you'll lose that. But you'll still have the X route, which is going to be uh, an easy one play touchdown against that anyway. Or at least a very big play. As you can see, it gets inside release every single time. I could probably even go as far as to um, just slant the B route here and work the A route. The A route should have success to the outside as well, especially with a fast guy like um, like Quez Watkins. Next up, we'll pick that again, and we'll do cover three. So I'm just gonna motion across the B receiver, runs from a hash mark to the short side of the field, put the uh, Y running back on a streak, and hopefully this will pull everything back so this X route can get over the top of that cornerback. As you can see, there's definitely a throwing lane since that corner route pulls the um the cornerback sneed all the way to the sideline all right next up i'm going to choose cover four match against cover four just motion the tight end of the line and put him on a streak that's all i really got to do and have a one play touchdown of the x route as that streak will basically create space for this receiver as i think initially it looks like the safety thinks it's his job but then when he switches to the tight end it kind of just it just creates automatic space i mean honestly the post route probably work without any adjustments but this will just get him open way more you can also just run it as is and the y route is going to eventually get gone as you can see you know once again just got a pass lead outside and the the you know if you got a little bit of a speed advantage that linebacker is not gonna be able to keep up last but not least we have cover for regular which we have to go to the dime or the dollar package for. So, block the running back, run from a hash mark to the short side of the field, motion at the tight end, put him on a streak, put the A route on a drag for a check down, and put the B route on a curl to hold that cornerback down. And as long as you can buy time in the pocket, you'll see that you can have a shot once, as long as you time this throw properly, uh, which I'll have to go to the replay, as we got an out of range but still completed, uh, still completed pass. So you might need a pretty good armed quarterback. 
but you can see how, um, you know, it's really all about when you throw it. As I, I say, it's typically I try to throw it around here when he's even with the with the cornerback. But I, that's kind of what I want the release to be. As you'll see, the release is coming out there. So I basically time my throw. I start pushing the button well before, as I know he's going to cross, so I can time it with that release. And then doing that, you can see I'm just throwing the space and you know you throw you're running away from the safety so it's a very easy catch and run next up we get the halfback slip screen i don't really like running screen plays unless you have a second option and this guy here is a good second option at least against zone coverage especially if you throw it out quickly i think i actually took a little bit too long there against man coverage they're not gonna that's not gonna work but you can see how the the you know you at least have a check down if the the screen play is blown up which is something that can happen, especially if your user is watching for screenplays. So this is a good uh, screenplay in my book because at least it has a second option, although that second option only works against zone. So if it's a man coverage, you kind of have to throw it out to the running back. And it'd probably be better to put somebody a little bit faster at this tight end spot for better catch and runs, but it's ultimately a very good play to at least those two receivers. And you also have the X route here, which will probably be your second best option uh, when it comes to man coverage rather than hitting the actual screen itself. So you do have the option to... Um, hit the X if for man or the RB for zone. Next up, we got the halfback power O. So good run play. Just make sure you have a fullback or a tight end at fullback. You can see you can cut that off up the middle if that um, you know that defensive end gets in. I can try to slide my my linebacker there. You can see there he blows them up right up the middle, and now we have a much better lane to the outside for a big run. Um, so, you know, there's there's a couple different ways to run it. You can run it short up the middle, or you can try to bounce it outside. And so it really depends on the alignment, too, as you can see. Um, you know, there we get about five, but I thought I could get more. But either way, the tight end really stones that defensive end because he's out so wide, which is kind of the issue. I, I'll try to slide right and hope that he can pick that up. As you can see there, he just blows them inside. Um, it's a very consistent run, as, as, as obviously it depends on the defensive formation you're looking at because that fullback has to land that block for this play to work. As you can see here, it gets that block, and I get outside, and I get an easy 10 yards. Next up, we have the double ins. I'm going to start off with cover two. We'll go ahead and do Tampa two first. So you got a couple different options here, but I find the best thing to do is just put the B route here on a 10-yard out route. Put the Y route on a wheel. That's all you really got to do. You got a good check down, which is going to be the, um, the uh, tight end in the flat once again. But you can see how you know this route here alone is is good enough to split the safeties. Next up, we'll do that again, and we will pick cover two man. Against cover two and cover two man, the Y route is an option. So this play here, I actually have two options that I could throw to. As you can see, this running back here might be the better of the two because the safe, the one trying to split the safeties is a little bit less um, effective in coverage. So we're going to do that, though. So like I said, the Y route's a good first option. But you can split the safety with the receiver here, although you can see he's just behind him. So it, it's it's a play that can be a catch and run, but you probably need a little bit more of a speed advantage than A.J. Brown has. Next up, we'll pick the same play. We'll continue with man coverage. We'll do cover and hole. Cover and hole is pretty much the same setup. You're just going to want to run this from a hash mark to the short side of the field. And we're going to have the same reads as the uh, the Y route. It's still a very good play on the wheel. As you can see, I can do that. It looks like he's in coverage with a, uh, with a cornerback, I'm guessing. I'm not really sure who Cook is. But um, yeah, I guess I'm guessing that's a linebacker. I'm not really sure. I don't. I'm not. I'm not sure. I know they're 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 uh, you know they're they're alignment that great. But if I motion this guy across, you can see how now the X route is inside of that safety, and it's going to make that play a lot easier, especially since if I'm running it from a hash mark like I am here. So once again, AJ Brown getting caught, but you can see a little bit more of speed or you know a little bit better release can really help to get that receiver. Open. You don't even have to put like I have the uh, the the B right there. I can leave him on that because that's actually a man beating route. So I can leave him on that. Let him beat that to the outside. And now you can see, like I said, this. Um, you're definitely gonna want a little bit more of a speed advantage for for the over the top post route. But you have more than one option anyway if the post route's not there and the running back's been very consistent as well. Pick that again. We'll do cover zero. Now for this, I just want to put these guys these in the backfield in a check and release. That's all I really gotta do. I got a lot of good man beating routes here. Uh, especially if I motion A route across, he's going to get outside and be a very easy uh, check down. The B route's a very good play, but I'm going to go to the X route. As you can see there, um, you know, I, actually the the post routes just beat that, if I'm being honest. Post routes beat uh, cover zero, but I actually had a little bit of help 
if you guys didn't see that, the safety that's in the check and release actually helped to get in the way, uh, which is perfect. And that only happened because when I motioned this guy across, you can see how the cornerback drops down on the receiver, and that ultimately, you can see right there, the back pedal um, kind of runs into the safety, but that's not always going to happen. Either way, the post route will always beat cover zero, though, whether you motion him across or not. You just have to make sure to put the running back on a check and release because otherwise that safety's going to be there. And you can see, like I said, I can just get that. He just breaks inside. Whether I, I mean, there I definitely threw too early, but he breaks inside regardless. Just, just as long as, like I said, I check and release that running back. And that check and release will pick up the first uh, guy through, as you can see right there. And we get that catch, which obviously wasn't uh, a catch and run. But you can see how that route beats that. I don't have to make that motion for the speed out route either. Although, obviously, I'd rather be throwing this to the outside. As you can see, I might be able to, be able to take this to the house. But, obviously, the user is typically going to be to the inside. So, motioning that guy across makes it even better. And the B route's a good man beating route too. Like I said, the, um, the tight end doesn't really beat man. So, if I know it's man, I don't really have to bother. You can see the outside leverage I have on that A route right now. If I can just steal that all game. I mean, that's something that is obviously very effective as well. So, good man beating routes all over the board. Next up, we'll do cover three. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the two running backs on wheel routes, and that's all I really gotta do. As I mean, I have to run from a hash mark to the short side of the field, that's kind of important. But you can see how this will help uh, AJ Brown create that lane as the, the wheel routes really would hold the outside cornerbacks down. I'll go to the replay. You probably want your slowest guy here because the deeper he gets down the field, the smaller he's going to make this window. I want him to only get like this far because you can see the cornerback has to basically react to that. I can tell that I threw the ball because he actually kind of jumped a little bit more to the receiver so put a nice slow fullback or tight end here so that that route doesn't get down the field too fast go and pick that again this time we'll do cover for match this is another play where you just put the wire out on a wheel and he's going to get matched up in a, a very favorable position with a linebacker uh, that can be very easily thrown to the outside for a very easy one play touchdown as long as you have a decent speed running back running it i think the best way to do this is just put the b and the a route on curls so that uh, it'll hold those the safety and the cornerback on that side and then you get a one-on-one -on -one to the post route although there was a free defender there and we almost had a one play touchdown we'll call that a one play touchdown but it would actually be best to, to to work even better to put them all on 10 yard curls even the fullback or the tight end in the backfield and now there's well there's still that extra defender so i guess i really didn't solve that problem but you can see how consistent this route is, at least, as we probably would have scored a one-play touchdown with a little bit more speed. And last but not least, we got cover four regular. Go ahead up to drop over here. Go to the cover four drop contain. Against cover four, put the tight end on a streak. Motion them out. Put the A route on a drag and the B route on a curl. And run from a hash mark to the short side of the field in the X route here. We'll have a shot once he gets crossed the safety. As you can see, the cornerback's playing way too shallow. So that's, you know, basically the, the point of the curl route. We'll have to go to the replay so we can get a better uh, time for when to throw this ball. Because you really have to throw it. The, the, the streaking tight end is really key, as I backed out by mistake. The streaking tight end is really the key here as he's what pulls the strong safety back because he's inside the free safety. So both of the safeties have to react. And once he gets uh, parallel, which is, you know, right around here, where he's parallel, you can see he's not he's not covering 11, he's covering 88. So I can bullet and pass lead. I'm pretty sure if I look back, I'm already doing that. As you can see, I kind of timed it for when he gets parallel. And you can see it's just a very easy throw. Uh, once he's, you know, I'm throwing a space here. Once he's inside that safety, there's nothing to do about it. Next up, we have the Y off power read. So I'm gonna watch the read defender. If he hesitates, I'm gonna keep with the quarterback. If he crashes in on the handoff, I'm gonna hand it off. So right there, hesitation, gotta take it with the quarterback. Once again, this is a wide looping play to the opposite direction as we get over 15 yards on that carry. Uh, you're going to want to have your, your your ball carry set to conservative for pretty much all these plays. So, like I said, watching that read defender there, actually he did he was aggressive and made a poor read. I thought he'd get caught up in the blocks. But that's really the only guy you're watching. If he, if he stays home like he does there, he's going to make that play every single time. But there are looks sometimes where the blitzing linebacker gets in too, and there's not, nothing to do about it, like right here. So I'm going to have to continue in the direction of the of the running back, even though I can't hand it off to the running back. So you got to watch that backside linebacker on a, on a formation like this. But typically, um, you know, it's a two, it's a it's a single read play, and uh, it can be very explosive in either direction, just as long as the the block and cooperates right there. You can see we get, um, you know, I'm trying to take it wide left, but you really can, you know, a lot of times just, just take it this, the, right at the middle there. As you can see, once again, he takes out the ball carrier, get a couple yards. They're not always going to get an explosive play, 
but the best way to get an explosive play is taking it back wide like this. You know what I mean? Like taking it back as I get close to 10 yards there. That's probably the best way to take it with the quarterback. Although realistically, I probably want to hand it off to the receiver every single time as that's probably the most explosive. Next up, we're going to go with the Y off power O. It's another very good run play. Going to keep going random. This is another play where you might want to have uh, somebody, um, you know, like a fullback at that um, at that one spot. As you can see, once again, we're having the exact same results. Very good outside runs with this formation, especially with this setup. Because now, whenever you go wide receiver one in the backfield, you actually get a tight end uh, outside at the uh, the flanker spot, which actually helps with blocking. So now I got two tight ends in the direction that I'm traveling, and it really can be, um, you know, it could really be a good uh, addition to this play. Although I think the first run play I showed the wide zone is probably a little bit better. Next up, we got the wide receiver wheel. So this play here, if I run from a hash mark to the open side of the field, I'm going to have uh, some really good concepts if I put the B route on a streak and put the X route on a zig. Now, the zig is up to you. You can do whatever you want. You can put them on an out route. You can put them on whatever you want because all I really want uh, for that is just I want some sort of man-beating concept on that side. And I think a zig works pretty good. But splitting the field in half, the right side is going to be zone. The left side is going to be man. And that's really the only determination I have to make. As you can see here, we can just, you know, if we run it from a hash, that's going to be very effective against any zone coverage because the streak pulls everything back. And on the other side, hopefully we get a man coverage this time. Uh, I like the zig. Like I said, the zig route works for me as I make a poor read there. Like I said, it's a single read, though. I don't have to make too much of one. So the second I, I, I was rolling in that direction, hoping it would be a man, the second I realized it's a zone, I know that my two routes on the other side will be wide open. The running back, once again, we get another zone coverage. I could take that for a good check down. I was hoping we get a man coverage at some point here. Definitely looks like we might have a man coverage here. So now we'll go ahead and we'll do that again. Like I said, I got my streak to pull that, uh, if it's a cover one, to pull that cover one safety over. And like I said, very easy, uh, you know, play. No linebacker safety is going to keep up with your best or fastest receiver coming out of the backfield. Next up out of the Debo package, we have the wide zone. For this entire package, just make sure to put your, if you want, the, if you want a wide receiver in the backfield, just put wide receiver one. And if you want to go a step further, if you want to have your fastest receiver back here, which I think would probably be the best way to go, you just have to go to your depth chart and put your fastest receiver at wide receiver one. So if I want to have uh, Quez Watkins there, who's a much faster receiver, this would be the way that I would do it. Now, I don't want this for the rest of the plays, but you can always manipulate who that wide receiver one is in the depth chart. So let's go on this back out. And now you can see we have Quez Watkins in there, which is going to be a much faster option. So let's go and let's pick the wide zone. Go to go random on defense. Not a lot of adjustments here. Uh, the running back, who is your you know lead blocking, uh, you know fullback essentially, you might want to put a fullback or a tight end who has a higher blocking ability than your actual running back. But you can see he's doing a pretty good job. And because I have so much speed now at running back, I have a 97 speed receiver here. It's going to be a lot easier to uh, to get outside of things. It's going to be a lot easier to to use that speed burst. And you can see my running back DeAndre Swift is doing pretty good. I'm getting close to 15 yards every single carry. So very good play. Not a lot of adjustments needed here. Next up, we got the read option. Go ahead and we'll pick random again. For read options, you're just going to watch the read defender, which is that defensive end. If he crashes in like he does there, just keep what hurts. Take it outside, although we're not getting the best carry here because that guy was kind of on top of it. Uh, we're kind of undersized considering we're actually trying to... We do have two tight ends. We only have two receivers on the field, but still. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's all I got to do. There, the, the tackle did a better job of sealing for me, and now we're just getting down the field. If you're going to run this, though, if you're going to read options, you might want to put your quarterback's ball carrier to conservative because they do have a tendency to fumble quite a bit. Here you can see he waits. Anytime he waits, you're going to want to hand off, especially once again. Since we have a receiver in the backfield, you're going to want to have... Um, you know, ball carriage set a conservative. You're going to get a lot of fumbles, uh, which isn't fun. Uh, so I'll probably get a fumble here. I haven't gotten a fumble yet, which is totally surprising. But very good play. Next up, we got the mesh spot. This play here, it's going to be good against random defenses. We'll start with that. Against random defenses, you have a good high-low concept here against zone. This running back is going to be a good zone beater. Um, I find that if you're going to work that particular route, it might be best to put the B route on a streak. But that's not really the route that I want to focus on. I'm going to mostly focus on the double drags. And this B route here can get open in between as long as the user or the computer follows a little bit better than they did there. I tried to force that. But you can see right here, I mean, he's, he's dropping on it. But I can still drop that in the bucket. There's still a window. But you'll get more if, uh, you know, if these drag routes clear everybody out. So you can see here, I can work these drags, although I don't know what happened there. I got an under-pressure throw. 
But the, the double drag is really will beat any man or zone. And then if your user is following that, then you can throw to the B route. But this is your first read. You're going to throw these double drags. And you can steal that pretty much all game as we actually fumbled there for some reason. But that's a really good play. And then, like I said, if you really want to stretch for that... Um, for that high low concept i mean i could do a high low concept with a slant and put this b route on a streak and now if i have a zone i could either take this underneath because the streak is what's going to pull that first initial defender back so you can get that catch and run so there are a couple different ways that you can uh, really attack that you can put the a route on a streak too you can put the b route on like a 10 yard out route which would be a good high low concept just something to pull these guys back and that was actually a man coverage which is was a poor read by me as you can see the defender ran over for that tackle that route won't beat man coverage but you have a lot of really good routes here that will, including the Y route, which, you know, once again, 97 speed receiver. So if you get a man coverage like I had there, that was a man cover one, you can have a one play touchdown with that. And that's one of the values of this play. So we're going to pick that again, and we'll pick man zero because we just saw cover one hole. Against man zero, just put the running back on a check and release. And you'll see right here off the, off the rip that nobody even covered uh, Quez Watkins, really. As you can see, I guess it was the cornerback's responsibility from across the field. I'm not really sure what happened there. We'll go ahead and run that again, though. And we'll see if we get that same look because sometimes you'll get some weird stuff in practice mode. But, yeah, there's, like, nobody out there covering, um, covering the receiver, which is really odd. Uh, I don't know who's assigned to him. I might have to check this uh, in a minute as I accidentally threw the wrong guy. Yeah, nobody's covering this receiver out here uh, until he turns up field, which is really weird because then McDuffie switches off. So I don't know if you're going to get that look uh, that easy in gameplay where nobody covers him, but if so, that's a complete cheat code because that's absolutely ridiculous. Like right here, now we got a linebacker on him, but he can't really stay with him. Or was it even a linebacker? Yeah, I think that's a linebacker or safety, but either way, it doesn't matter. We have a very easy one play touchdown against any man coverage, except cover two. It's not really gonna beat cover two man. Need more help or just wanna show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.